Economics in Hearthstone 4 is limited at best, so this tutorial will primarily concern construction and economic laws, which make up the majority of what constitutes economics in this game. Hearthstone 4 is fundamentally a war game, and as such every single aspect of it leads back to this, and is based around the concept of war. The economic system that does exist is almost non-existent. Many had hoped for this to be expanded upon, but it appears that this may simply never happen. In this tutorial, I will give you the tools needed to build a strong industrial base to back up your nation militarily, so as to be able to dominate and enjoy the games. Let's get going. Most of the construction and economic outcomes you get in Hoi 4 will be in your economic loss. This is primarily the trade and economic loss. We will start with trade, which dictate how much of your resources are exported to other nations. If you hover over each of the options, you will see a certain percentage of your goods going to the market. Let's say you extract 94 chromium. With the free trade law, you would put 80% of this into the market, meaning that 75 would be put into export markets, while the remaining 19 would be available for domestic production. It may at first seem like it would be a bad idea to go for a more expert-focused trade laws, as you might struggle to produce the equipment you need, or perhaps even import it. However, there are numerous benefits for exporting. The most obvious is that you get construction speed, research speed, and production output bonuses for every level above closed economy. Free trade, which is as far as you can go, gives a mighty 15% construction speed and 10% research speed bonus. This is huge and should always be considered, especially in the early game. We will cover trade more in a little bit, but it is also worth noting that by having more exports available, you may get more civilian factories as well from trade. The other and probably most important part of industry, economics, and construction of Hoi 4 is your economy law. I'm going to stop myself from ranting for 15 minutes about how silly this mechanic is. This is a tutorial, so I'm going to stop myself. Essentially, these laws dictate how militarized your economy is. Having more mobilized economy laws give you bonuses to factory construction speed, which is the core of your economy and industry, as well as reducing your consumer goods which is what percent of your available economic output goes to things like toys or civilian cars, which are a waste in the eyes of the game as they do not help you militarily. The law that you want to get to here optimally is War Economy, as this is where you get the lowest consumer goods and most bonuses without taking the massive minus 3% recruitable population that comes with total mobilization. In order to raise these laws, you must have adequate war support. It's important to note that to go to a war economy, you must be either fascist or communist. Not aligned in democracies can only go to war economy when they are actually in a war. Due to this, fascist and communist nations are much, much stronger in Hearts of Iron 4. Industrial concern is another law that will affect you economically. Taking industrial concern will give you bonuses to research speed on industrial techs, such as those that give you construction speed bonuses at max factories. Some nations get especially useful and unique concerns that can give construction seed bonuses, among others as well. Always prioritizing taking this after the other two. One of the most important aspects of your economy and industry in Hoi 4 is consumer goods. This is frankly a very misunderstood concept, and I have heard some absolutely insane interpretations of what people think this is. So let me break it down in terms of mechanics and how to use it to your advantage. Every country has a military industrial complex and a civilian one. Even the ancient city states that clung to the Euphrates and Tigris rivers, part of the economy would be built around supplying swords, shields, slings, and spears for the state to protect itself and its interests. Consumer goods in Hoi 4 represent what portion of your economy is being used to produce things that are not military related. In this time, that would be things like plates, cups, civilian clothing, vehicles, and anything like this. As countries prepare for war or enter it entirely, they transition their economy to war and focus on making guns and equipment. Consumer good percentage, again, is what percent of your economy that is not used for this, so in peacetime it would be high and in wartime low. It's important in terms of game mechanics in that all factories working on consumer goods are useless. In reality, that is a very silly concept, but in the context of Hoi 4, it is important to adapt to. You can find the number of consumer goods in your construction tab, and the exact percentage by hovering over them. Again, this number is taken out of your military factories and civilian factories, 
Dockyards are not included. Optimally, you want to get this as low as you can. The best ways you have to lower your consumer goods is by getting higher mobilization laws. That you can also do this through having high stability as well as taking certain focuses and advisors. The lower the consumer goods, the more civilian factories you will have to build more industry, and the more military factories you will have to produce military equipment. Advisors in Hearts of Iron 4 do all manner of useful things, but I just want to briefly highlight a few to keep an eye out for. At Vanilla Hoi 4, your advisors vary based on nation, so it's not a one-size-fits-all situation. There are advisors that give you bonuses to stability, construction speed, consumer good reduction, research speed, and party support. All of these give varying degrees of economic benefits and should be taken when available. In this section, I'm going to cover the technologies that relate to economic expansion and industrial development. There aren't a ton of them, so this will be short, but they are incredibly important and should always be taken first. Electrical engineering is one of the first texts you should take and continue to do so. Research speed bonuses allow you to research everything faster, and although it doesn't technically fit squarely under economics, it should not be ignored. Always go down this part of your research tree. It is also worth taking the first nuclear research bonus later on in the game, when it's not ahead of time. The core statistic which will dictate how much industry you will get without direct conquest is construction speed. Every single one of these techs gives 10%, which adds up very quickly and should always be taken when not too far ahead of time. Industry is important due to the max factories in state modifier. Every province in Hoi 4 has a certain number of factories that can be built there. This modifier allows more to be made. It is easy to run out of building slots if you are a small country, essentially meaning you can't grow your economy anymore without this, so it is very useful. Excavation gives you more resources for each you have. If you are exporting a lot of materials that are likely to be bought by the AI or players, like rubber or tungsten, this allows you to export more and get civilian factories. I just mentioned building slots, so I want to take a moment to underscore this conceptually. If you click on any part of the map in Hoi 4, you will see a glowing region which represents the province of the game. You are able to build civilian factories, military factories, or dockyards if you are on the coast in each of these, but there is a limit to how many you can build. This is based off of the base category, which represents how populated it is as well as the modifiers from research and focus trees. It's a good idea to look over how many building slots you have and will get with these modifiers to know how to build your economy. Trade in Hoi 4 is a simple matter of buying and selling. Unlike Victoria 3 or other games, it lacks any nuance and subtlety. Every nation produces resources that it has within its borders. They are added to a pool of extracted resources, of which a percentage are put into being exported based off of trade laws. It is important to note that just because a resource is exported doesn't mean it's being bought. If you hover over this number, it will tell you what if anything is being bought from other nations. The likelihood of another country buying your resources is based off their, their opinion of you, their need of course, and your trade deal opinion factor, which is an independent statistic. For every factory they spend importing your goods, you receive it. If, for example, the United Kingdom imported 16 rubber off of France, the UK would lose 2 sieves and France would gain 2. In single player, it is hard to get anything bought by the AI, but in multiplayer games, it's a huge part of the roleplay, or even if you're in casual. In order to receive the goods, you will automatically get them if you share a land border, but if you do not, you'll have to use convoys to carry the goods to your shores. There are three types of main factories in Hearts of Iron 4. Civilian factories, military factories, and naval dockyards. Mills and dockyards are used for the military, and will be covered in that video. We will be focused on civilian industry, as well as infrastructure in this portion of the video, and talk about why it's so important. Again, economics is really basic in Hoi 4, so the sole metric for your industrial power and wealth is civilian industry. These factories are what produce all other types of buildings, including themselves. Essentially, the more you have, the more building power you have. Each sieve puts out a certain amount of production, so it is important to build a lot of them. At the beginning of the game, for almost every playthrough, you will want to put out a lot of these to build a solid industrial base. No matter how bloodthirsty a warmonger you are, this step must be done. Even the fascists in World War II in real life took the time to do so before starting killing their neighbors. You should seek to build them in places with high infrastructure, 
Infrastructure has many benefits, including increasing resource production from the area that it is built in, much like the excavation tech, and improving supply. The bonus we are interested in, however, is their increase to the construction speed. When maxed out at 5, it increases your construction speed by 2 times. Therefore, you will construct factories twice as fast. This means building up lots of infrastructure in an area with lots of empty building slots you plan to develop is useful in the long term. The earlier, the better. For example, as France, I would max out infrastructure in Calais, due to the 5 empty slots there, not accounting for the ones that will come with the increase to max factories in the state, in addition to the increased resources you will gain from what is there. This is really all there is to base industry and economics in terms of actual game features. Mods add a lot to this basic standard, but in vanilla, it's quite simple. I hope you found this video useful. I realize Hoi 4 is very complicated, I hope this tutorial series will help new and returning players to understand the core mechanics of the game. Once you watch these videos, you should be able to enjoy the games without being overwhelmed by the massive amount of features in the game. I also have two other major tutorials for military and politics, as well as a few others planned. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I'm Hamurabe, and I will catch you later.